Hey, what is good everyone? Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking about a conversation that you probably heard here on YouTube and pretty much everywhere on social media. Crop versus no crop. And I'm not talking about necessarily the sensor that we have in our cameras, but mostly on the action itself after you're taking a photo. So let me tell you if you should crop or you shouldn't when you're using especially crop sensors like this old Sony uh, mirrorless or the Fujifilm lineup and uh, how that can affect your images and if it's a good thing or not. So what is crop? It's the action that we're taking every time when trying to isolate a subject and uh, show as uh, less as possible in a photo to uh, tell the story and uh, make people understand what we were trying to say through that photo. And uh, that is not only the crop that uh, you probably heard of. Crop is even more than that. These sensors, like I said, these smaller sensors are called crop sensors or APS-C sensors, which means they're a little bit smaller than a full frame sensor, a little bit even smaller than a uh, medium format sensor and probably the smallest for a large sensor. But now we're talking about full frame and crop because the other two sensors are a bit different and I'm not gonna get into it. If you uh, are interested in this kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna make a video to uh, differentiate the sensors and how they work and how you can take advantage of all of them. But today we're talking about crop sensors uh, comparing to the full frame and uh, I'm gonna say from the beginning that there is no difference and uh, probably you heard people talking about professionals shooting full frame and uh, amateur and uh, beginners and people who are trying to learn shooting crop sensors because they're cheap. It's true, cheaper than the full frame, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm a professional and I'm shooting Fujifilm and I shoot Fujifilm in the past. I also shoot Micro Four Thirds at some point and all of them fit in my work, in my business. I did what I need to do with them and I think that's a good thing. So uh, don't be fooled by the fact that you heard everyone saying that if you are not shooting a full frame, you're not a professional or you shouldn't be taking serious. Well. I believe you should because it's all about the story, it's all about what you are trying to uh, evoke to your photo, what feeling, what's the story behind your uh, photograph and that's all. So the crop sensors, like I said, are a bit smaller than the full frame sensors and uh, that makes us think if the action itself, the cropping, what we're doing in Photoshop or Lightroom or any other editing photo, is it necessary? or it's gonna destroy our photos. Now to understand more, every lens that you're putting on a full frame or a crop sensor have the same, exactly the same focal length, but because we're cropping in with the APS-C sensors and because the sensors itself, it's cropping in, those images will look like are a little bit more zoomed, like the lens that we're using was a little bit longer, but that it's not true. It's actually a crop. It's pretty much the same thing like you're cropping in the software. But is it? Because some consider that cropping on a full frame image, it's not exactly the same like you're cropping on an APS-C image. Because they say that the resolution and the quality of the image degrades on the APS-C and you will have more bending, you will have um, more noise and so on and so forth. But let me explain it to you. It's very simple. Like I said, any lens on any sensor has the same uh, focal length and there is no difference whatsoever in focal length. If you're shooting on a full frame or if you're shooting on APS-C, the lens is gonna still be the focal length that says on it. The only difference is that you're gonna have less in the frame on the APS-C and more on the full frame. Now, cropping an APS-C sensor means you are trying to get even smaller, but the resolution shouldn't change, should it? Because we're shooting on a 26 megapixel or 24 megapixel sensor on APS-C, as well on a 24 or 26 megapixel sensor on a full frame. So comparing those two photos, it should be a difference why the resolution will be even worse on the APS-C when uh, we have the same amount of megapixels. Well, 
spoiler alert, it's not the same. It's better on the APS-C sensors than the full frame. Because uh, when you're cropping on an APS-C sensor, imagine if you can, if you can't, I'm gonna do a diagram and show you exactly what I'm talking about. But if you can, imagine that the APS-C sensor, it's a bit smaller. So all those 24, 26, 30 megapixels are crammed in that smaller uh, form factor of the sensor. While in the full frame, that area is a bit bigger and they're the same megapixels crammed in that area. When we're cropping, we're getting more resolution on our photos on the APS-C than the full frame. It's logic because we have more in a smaller fa form factor and we have the same on a bigger uh, form factor. Well then, why everyone is saying that using an APS-C sensor will make you a beginner or a intermediate? And uh, if you're using a full frame, you will eventually become a professional photographer. Well, it's a misconception for sure. And that probably comes from the fact that indeed it is a difference when you're shooting on these small sensors comparing to the bigger sensors like the full frame. And that is the bokeh. You will get more bokeh in the full frame than you're gonna get on the APS-C. But that doesn't make the crop cameras worse. They're all tools to use in different situations. They're all used for different stuff. And I'm gonna tell you for sure that if you are a sports photographer or a, an event photographer, if you are shooting longer distances, if you're a wildlife photographer, these crop sensors are doing better than a full frame because you don't need to carry amazingly huge lenses like a 600 millimeter or an 800 millimeter. When on this one, you can just use a, um, let's say 400 millimeter, which will transform it in a 600 millimeter and it's smaller than the particular lens. So the sensor itself shouldn't make a difference in uh, the image quality other than creating more bokeh. Like I said, the bigger the sensor, the bigger or the deeper the bokeh and the better the bokeh is and the area behind your subject will be even more blurrier because you have, like I said, a bigger sensor captured on the same lens. So what should you buy? if you decide to go into photography. I would say for sure, if you don't mind having a little bit less um, of uh, out of focus area and a little bit less bokeh in your photos, go ahead and buy an APS-C, either a Sony or a Canon, a Nikon or a Fujifilm. And I will definitely push you towards Fujifilm because it does have more perks than the other cameras and more good things and easter eggs that you can find inside and take advantage of but it's your choice and I uh, don't want to interfere with that nonetheless the crop sensor it's the same thing as a full frame sensor as long as you're shooting for the crop sensor and uh, as long as you know the limitations and uh, you would say Chris but I can get the same amount of bokeh or out of focus area behind my subject with a, an APS-C sensor. And I agree with you, yes, you can. Because if you're moving a little bit towards your subject and use a uh, little bit a longer lens than the one on the full frame, you will definitely get the same amount. But today we compared, like I said, apples to apples. I'm not saying that if you're putting a 50 millimeter lens on both cameras, you're gonna get the same bokeh, definitely not. But the focal length, will be the same in the end because you are shooting the same lens. So if you wanna get more bokeh, maybe you should put a little bit of a longer lens, an 85 or a 65 or whatever other lens. So guys, I hope I wasn't all over the place. It's morning and I might've been. I hope you guys took something out of this video. And if you did, please go ahead and share the video with others so they understand better uh, how these sensors are working. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's very important. This community grows every day and I'm super happy to see that. Also, put your comments in the box down below and let me know what are you shooting. It's a full frame, it's an APS-C, a micro four thirds or an, um, let's say, inch sensor, which is even smaller. Let me know how that affects your photography. 
Don't forget to give these videos a thumbs up, it's super important. And also stay focused, my friends. I will definitely see you in a bit. Thank you.